Siphon Filter 3 is the third entry in the very popular stealth action series that was released on the PlayStation that started way back in 1999. This would be the final version in the series to be released on the original PlayStation but would later go on to expand on the PlayStation 2 and Sony PSP. That continues to follow on the events of the original two games with Gabriel Logan and Leon Zing among other team members trying to stop the epidemic caused by the release of the siphon filter virus that has been covered up by the agency in which Gabe and Leon had been originally working for as they wanted to use that as a means to control the world but it also led to the level of corruption where the head of the agency was trying to dominate the entire country of America with the intention of becoming the president so was using the virus and the corrupt assets in order to hold the country and even the world to ransom. Where Siphon Filter 3 comes into play, it takes place not too long after the events of the second game. And that is the thing with the original three games in the series, is that they all directly continue on after the previous game in the series in general. But the difference with Siphon Filter 3 is, in many cases, while it is a sequel, much of the game even acts as a prequel to the original two games, as many of the missions that fit into the overall story arc force players to replay events from both the original game and even leading up to the events of the original game even going back to some of the early days of the characters development and story arcs that led them to be in the situation that they're currently in so how the game works around this is that towards the end of the second game Gabe and his team are still being hunted by the government agency but instead of trying to kill them outright the agency leader has other plans so his his intention is to use Gabe and his team as scapegoats in a way to cover up the leak of the virus and even the corruption within the agency as telling the story to let the world know that in many ways they try to turn things around on Gabe to make it out that he's a terrorist and that he is the reason why the siphon filter virus got released in the first place. So what they decide to do is hold a court hearing and try to pin all of everything that has happened that the agency caused but try to pin it on Gabe himself so that they can put him in jail and out of commission altogether but it doesn't necessarily go to plan as you'll see later on in the game as while some of the members of the agency like the guy that's the head over the agency he has his own ways of wanting to do things but then there's other parties involved that would rather a more simple approach and there's a conflict between the two so as you progress through the game you will inevitably see the outcome but with regards to gameplay wise not much has changed from the previous two titles it still uses the stealth and action based gameplay mechanics that had become very popular within the first two games in the series but there has been a slight improvement in terms of the overall visuals and the graphics even in the CGI uh, movie segments along with the actual graphics themselves in game the players with Gabe and Leon and so forth have more facial features and there's just a bit more detail in terms of the character models within each of the environments in general but aside from that the whole gameplay aesthetic is almost identical the reality is is that these three games you you could nearly combine them all into one game in the series as they all play almost identical to each other in many respects and I think that's what made them so popular was the fact is that the story continued on but the gameplay mechanics for the most part stayed relatively the same they didn't try to change or really tweak anything that would later be changed with regard to future sequels on the likes of the PS2 and the PSP where they would change the control systems to adapt to more modern controls that were being developed at that time on more modern consoles which could lead to a bit of confusion like I have said even in my previous video of Siphon Filter 2 which I'll leave a link below in the description and on the card I do mention in that that I personally prefer the original three games on the PS1 compared to the future sequels while they're still really good games in their own right but there's just something about the original three games that have a last and impact and appeal and even in terms of the overall story because everything connects a lot more fluently and it just is a continuous process so the reality is is if you've played Siphon Filter 1 you naturally you will transition very easily into the second and third games and more to the point you will want to play them 
anyway just to figure out the outcomes of the story and how it continues on so with the missions in this game while it does have many elements that try to continue on the story the majority of the game is spent going back over previous elements even leading back to further beyond the original games where you have to play a variety of different missions that try to tell or retell the story so you can get a clear idea of the origins of the characters themselves but also of the siphon filter virus and how it originated which takes Gabe and Leon how they originally met and takes them to different countries anywhere from Costa Rica to other known and water tone countries where you have to complete a variety of different missions and objectives in order to progress and then eventually would lead on to the subsequent plots of the games that came before it so it's an interesting concept that the fact is that it is a sequel but it also is, acts as a prequel in many ways there's very few games that you ever see that really do that and this does it quite well because you get a full understanding and it kind of like goes full circle in terms of the overall story arc you get to see elements of what is coming but you also get to see elements of what happened previously even long before the game's first introduction way back in 1999 with that being said during the release of siphon filter 3 the game received decent enough reviews but it didn't receive as good a review say as the second game i think it was because of the mixed interpretation of the story because of the fact is well like i just mentioned with it being a sequel but also acts as a prequel i think in many respects back at the time a lot of gamers and even more magazines and reviewers would have been left a bit confused as to what way the game was intended to be and even at the time when it was released there was a lot of discrepancies and a lot of issues going on in the world so there was kind of like a lot of things going on that kind of didn't bode well with regards to certain elements that happened in the game which kind of threw a lot of players or even people off in general so it left a lot of people just really wouldn't touch the game as such which was quite a pity because when you look at the overall quality and the longevity of the game and how it intertwines with the original story it's very intriguing as it does have very good storytelling i know people in the past probably disregarded the acting now i think personally it was actually very good and it worked really well with the story but it was one of those games that really got you hooked you always wanted to complete that mission you always wanted to get further and you always wanted to understand what was going to happen next but like with the original games in the series the one thing i will admit with siphon filter 3 and it's no different from any of the other games is that it is brutally hard there is other modes in the game now they did take away the multiplayer mode that was added into the second game in the series and they added in more like of a mercenaries kind of style game where you have to complete various tasks and objectives and you're given different tasks to complete on each mission and you had to do it in different ways to kill a certain amount of enemies or to take them out without being seen and to kill them or complete objectives within a certain time limit so it allowed you to really elevate your level of skill and it would really test your level of skill to see how good you really were with the game mechanics which was a nice touch but again it would have been very difficult for many players even myself included it was always a struggle but even with regards to the story and all of the missions in the game like the previous two games there's a lot of trial and error many of the elements in the game you will find yourself dying an awful lot and restarting areas many times over before you even get one good attempt at it you just need to kind of layer on the layout of each of the levels where the enemies position themselves and many times it genuinely is a bit of luck in order to get past certain areas if you will because in many instances in the game especially later on and it was the same with the first two games enemies will constantly spawn there's like a never-ending supply of them and the only way to get through it it's very like if you put in mind the later call of duty games that you would see on the likes of the ps3 or ps2 and even more modern games in certain instances in those games enemies will limitlessly spawn there's no limit really to how many of them there is and as long as you stay still they'll just keep coming so the only alternative is to eliminate what's in front of you as quickly as possible and then can try and continue on to get to the next checkpoint because if you don't you will just be destroyed and you'll find that even more so with the third game in the siphon filter series but regardless it's still a really good game in its own right it's a great addition to an already incredible series on the playstation and honestly for me 
the first three games in the series are my personal favourite as they all intertwine with each other and just the gameplay mechanics while they can be clunky I just think that they work well because they didn't change that really as such throughout each version of the game so it kind of gave you a feeling of being familiar with what you needed to do but these games in general were a great alternative to the likes of the iconic Metal Gear Solid back in the day so if you wanted to play something that although is different but at the same time has similar elements you won't go wrong with the siphon filter series but ideally if you want to get into the series i would recommend that you play the first game and then work your way through the second and then onto the third and then if you can get access to the later sequels on the ps2 or psp you can go and play them as well mind you they are very different to the ps1 versions but they're still great games in their own right i would love to know your thoughts on the third entry in the siphon filter series or what do you think of the entire series in general is it a series of games that you're fondly familiar with and is it a series that you would gladly revisit the fact is now that it's on the playstation plus premium if you have access to the subscription there's no excuse not to play it again so i would recommend that you do but anyway i'd love to hear your thoughts on it so be sure to share it down in the comments below and if you would like to see more content around other types of stealth or action espionage games that were also released on the ps1 you can check out the playlist here on screen and as always keep those gaming memories alive